Well, this is your devotional for Thursday, May 28th, and we're continuing to walk through the book of Psalms. I hope they're staying rich for you. We're moving toward something called the Psalms of Ascent in a couple of weeks, and I love the Psalms of Ascent. They were the Psalms that the, that the people would sing as they went up to Jerusalem to celebrate God's goodness and to worship and glorify Him. So we're get, drawing near those, but I love this portion of the Psalms as well. Psalm 107 is almost a, a series of stories about people going through challenges, how they cried to God, and how God delivered them. I'm gonna read one of those little narrative stories from the Psalm, but there's a couple more if you read later in the day. If you read through the rest of Psalm 107, you'll, you'll get the, the rhythm of these stories and God's deliverance and power. So listen with me to Psalm 107, verse Verses 1 through 9. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. You have a story, I have a story. We're going to hear someone's story right here in Psalm 107. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe. Those he gathered from the lands, from east and west, from north and south. Some wandered in the desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. And here's the turning point. Verse 6. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for His unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. There's kind of three movements in each of these stories. It's real people saying, we were going through this, we were struggling. In, in this case, it, you know, they had foes and enemies. They were looking for a home, but they couldn't find it. They were wandering in desert wastelands. I mean, that was their struggle, that was their story, that was their journey. And then there's this hinge, this turning point. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. That God showed up in the midst of the struggle, in the midst of the pain. And then there's this invitation, so let them praise God. Let them celebrate his goodness. The encouragement to you today is that you have a story that God is writing. You have times where you're struggling and hurting, and when you cry to God, you've seen him show up and deliver you. And sometimes his deliverance is just, I'm with you in the storm. I'm with you in the tough times. Sometimes his deliverance is, I'm gonna heal you. I'm gonna provide this. Sometimes it's, I'm gonna be enough for you when you don't have this, and I'll give you strength to make it through this physical ailment. But God always shows up. And he always delivers in some way when we cry out to him. And, and I love at the end of, the, of this portion of the psalm, for he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Remember that God is a God who satisfies, who fills, who provides for us. Not always in our timing, not always with exactly what we want. I know in my life I've prayed for many things that I haven't gotten. And some of those things I prayed for later on, I looked back and thought, I'm glad I didn't get that. I'm glad that God told me no. God is way smarter than me. Other prayers I've prayed and they still haven't been answered the way I want to see them answered and I keep praying, trusting that God is on the throne. God, that's our prayer, that we would walk through this day confident that you, that you are Lord, that you rule, that, that you reign, and that when we cry out to you, from our desert times and our wilderness times, when the foes are coming against us, when we cry out to you, God, you show up and you are with us in the midst of those times. That you deliver us sometimes by taking us out of those and sometimes by being with us in those times. Let us walk in your strength. Let us have the courage and the wisdom to cry out to you in tough times and watch as you show up and show yourself faithful. We pray this in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Well, we're engaged in something called the good neighbor. And I want you just to hang in there for another minute and just hear a little bit more about our good neighbor initiative. Hello, Shoreline family. What if we really took the time to know those who lived around us and actually prayed for them? What if you took time out of your busy schedules and overcame the many excuses to go out and talk to your neighbors with no agendas and just to say hi? I'm convinced that your neighborhood would be a better place to live from everyone just from you building relationships and praying for them. I know each of us has a different relationship with our neighbors. For some of you, they're our best friends, and for others, you haven't even met despite living as neighbors for 15 years. Wherever you are in the relationship spectrum, I want you to think about your neighborhood and write down those who you know and who live around you and start praying for them. 
Next, I want you to schedule a time to go out and connect with your neighbors. For some of them, it will be a familiar face and a conversation with a good friend as you get caught up on life. But for others, it might be the first time you've ever spoken. A Shoreline friend told me just the other day that this seemed like it was the last thing their family needed to do. I mean, after all, they were homeschooling their children and working at the same time. Besides, they knew the neighbors that surrounded them and that was good enough. But as they thought and prayed about it more, they decided as family that they were gonna go further down the street and just knock on a couple doors, say hi, and then check this off their list. Well, you know what happened. So a few houses turned into 10 and every neighbor was happy to see them. And some actually wanted to talk for quite some time. Now, I know this may not be the same for each of you in your neighborhoods, but what if it was? You don't actually know until you try. I know this may be intimidating to many of you as you're listening, but here's my challenge. Make a list of your neighborhoods and start to pray over it. Pray that God will give you courage to schedule a time to visit just one house and then go from there. If you're thinking about or have already started connecting with your neighbors, would you please email me at the address on the screen and let me know and I can start praying for you and your neighbors and give you any additional resources if you need them. I can't wait to hear the stories of how you have met some really neat people or have gotten to know your neighborhood a little better. As always, you can always find more information on our website at Shoreline Church. Look for Good Neighbor. Take care. God bless.